Recently, Seiko in apparently inadvertently released images of their upcoming 6105 reissue called SLA-033. In light of that, I thought I'd do a quick little comparison to my original 6105. Now, when you look at them head-on, overall, the, the general shape is the same, and they seem to have been pretty true to it. The main things that really stick out are the change in meters from 150 meter water resistance to 200. And there's some speculation that the new Seiko logo isn't applied, but possibly printed. It's really hard to say at this point, given the few photos they have, but it would be interesting if it really ended up printing it, given how expensive this is rumored to be. This is their speculation. This will be over five, 6,000 US and it'll be a limited edition. But aside from that, head on, it really does look similar. It has the classic right-sided hump. The dial layout seems to be very, very on point. When we look at the reverse, the design is basically the same. Now, the I guess you would call it engraving or printing is different on the back. It's more reminiscent of the original 6159 than the original 6105. More importantly, you see the movement designation on the new one being an 8L35, which suggests that it's probably going to be decently thicker than the original one. With the original 6105 is about 11 millimeters thick. And uh, this is probably going to be similar to what happened with the 62 MAS reissue. And here we see what I feel is probably the best improvement in the 6105 reissue, and that is its drilled lugs. The original one doesn't have it, and since they both use fat Seiko spring bars, it's an enormous pain to switch them out when you don't have drilled lugs. There are tons of stories of people mangling them, ripping them, and cutting them out because it's hard to access them, and you need a lot of force to get them out. So that really is something that is a great thing. Overall, my take on this reissue is a little bit mixed. Now, Seiko's been reissuing their old sports watches since the 2000s with their historical reissues. That's how the modern Marine Master came about. It was a tribute to their original 6159 and the original tuna can releases that came out in the 2000s were also the same thing. And it made a lot of sense for them to do reissues of those watches because they were unique, parts were hard to come by, and the watches themselves were really hard to come by. And um, so it made it more accessible to collectors who happened to want to have a more reliable version of that watch. But the thing is, and you can say that about the Tuna Can, the Marine Master, when you get to the 62 MAS, that watch, I guess you could say, is relatively rare. So it sort of made sense that there would be some demand, even though its case was really sort of generic for watches of that particular time period. Now with the 6105, that case is extremely unique. So I could understand why there'd be some desire to remake it. But the thing is the watch in original form is in and of itself not that rare. Sure, if you want to get an original one without Frankenstein parts or fake parts or anything like that, it becomes a bit of a tri more tricky endeavor, but it's still realistic. And while I imagine the release of this new watch is going to drastically change the going rate of the original ones, I think at this stage anyway, it's much more cost effective to get an original one. And that's when you get to the movement. Now, Seiko's been putting their 8L high beat movements into a lot of these new watches these reissues, and when you compare it to the lower beat 6105, it's sort of a little bit weird. I guess it makes it more of a luxury watch because the one nice thing you could say about the old movements like the 6105, the 6309 is they're really great workhorses. And of course you should have it serviced every once in a while, but even watches that haven't been serviced, they still keep chugging along. So it does, I think this reissue sort of does sort of move this 6105 into a different direction as it's, no one's really ever thought of it as a luxury watch. Watch. But I understand why they're doing it. Any company that's fortunate to have as much history as they do is obviously going to be reissuing, especially if you see the increased interest in vintage watches. So I certainly understand why it comes. it's coming down the pipeline, but if you happen to be interested, I certainly think it would be worthwhile to look into buying an original 6105 while the prices, I guess, are still relatively stable. And that's about it for this video, and as usual, thanks for watching.